Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, we're going to be looking into some things of God, into the Word of God, and we're going to trust the Spirit of God to uh, reveal things to us, the people of God. Amen? Can you say amen to that? You see, that's the only way God reveals things to anybody. It is by His Spirit. And I'm telling you what, I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God. And so uh, we're going to look at some things. I want us to uh, kind of target some things uh, today and look at this. Maybe I guess we have a title calling it The, the Will of Man. Now you might think that's a strange title, but I'll tell you something about the will of man. How many of you know we all have our own free will? And basically, we do what we want to do, whether you want to admit to it or not. Sometimes we can be stubborn. Have you ever been guilty of that? Of course we all have. Yeah, I want to do it my way. Well, let me tell you what, in the kingdom of God, we, we're learning more and more that God's way is the way because my way is always leading me to the wrong way. And my way gets me in trouble. So I'd rather not be in trouble. How about you? So we're talking about today looking at the will of man. Now we, we're right here at the Christmas uh, season. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus, the Word. The Word became flesh, and aren't we thankful? And we've been looking at this in the last couple of weeks, talking about the incarnation and the reason that Jesus was manifested in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil. And uh, he also bruised the head of the serpent, which was the devil, which means he broke the lordship of the ruler devil, the Satan, the ruler. See, Satan became the god of this world. Whenever Adam handed his authority over to Satan, he became the god of this world. He became the ruler of the earth but uh bruising the head in oriental languages means he broke the lordship of a ruler praise god jesus broke the lordship of satan and no longer is satan our lord jesus is my lord but let me tell you what it takes to make him my lord it takes my will it takes your will the will of man this is something that Stanley Howard Frodsham used to tell his students in Bible, Bible college. He said, I always tell them, the biggest hindrance to God is the will of man. Let me say it a different way. The will of man is the biggest hindrance to the will of God. Now that's awesome. We have something more powerful than God's will. And what is it? It's our will. You see, the proof is in the pudding. Of the eating is in the pudding. We've heard that before, haven't we? See, God will never make you or me do anything. He won't. God won't make you do anything. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. We said this in our prior teaching. Uh, Jesus has already finished it. And he gave us the Spirit of God to walk it out. Jesus has already worked it out. Now we have been given the spirit of truth to get into the word and get the word of truth in us so we can walk it out. Our job here on earth, our responsibility after the new birth in the family of God is to walk out what Jesus did on earth, what he worked out. Does that make sense? But I got to be willing See, my will can hinder God's will. See, I've said this to our church family before. God doesn't just want you to come to church. God wants you to want to come to church. See, it's kind of like disciplined children. How many of you ever disciplined your kids? You've told them to do something. Well, they do it. But you can tell by the way they do something whether they want to or whether they're just uh, doing it because this is what mom said to do. I got it because this is what dad said to do. See, willingness, a willing heart opens the door for the blessings to come up on us. Amen. Isaiah 119 tells us this. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Well, that lets us know right there. 
why sometimes we're not eating the good of the land. We're either not willing or we're not obedient. So the will of man is vitally important as we live in this earth to accomplish God's plan. It's the will of man that enables us to accomplish God's plan. And uh, so, you see, we've got to want to. Uh, just because Jesus destroyed the works of the devil, he, he broke the lordship of the ruler Satan, according to Genesis 3.15, uh, we have to want to walk it out. And you know what? There's no way to walk it out except by faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe, must believe that God is, and must believe that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. There's diligence involved, and that takes our will. I've got to become willing to become diligent so that I'll be diligent to seek God, so that I'll be pleasing to God, so that I can walk by faith and live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says this, For we walk by faith and not by sight. See, the temptation is for us to operate in our physical senses. But the kingdom of God doesn't operate in physical senses. It operates in faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, according to uh, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the substance of things you hope for. Faith is the evidence of things you don't yet see. See, I, I can't be moved by what I see. If I'm moved by what I see, then I'm not moved by faith. Faith will move me not based on what I see. Faith will move me based on what God says in his word. That's why I've got to know what God says before I can have faith in what God said. I cannot believe God for something that I don't know it's his will for me to have it. So I've got to get in the word. That's why we need to be in a good Bible teaching church. The Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the habit of some is. So he encourages us to assemble together. We need each other in the family of God. We need to be taught the word of God. And it happens by the spirit of God. You see, the Bible calls the spirit of God the teacher. He'll teach us things. He'll teach us the word. But God has uh, a way of doing things decently and orderly. And God's order of being taught is for believers to come together and to sit under the teaching and leadership of pastors and evangelists and apostles and, and prophets and teachers that are anointed by the Spirit of God. You see, it's the anointing of God that removes the burdens and breaks the yokes. And so it's the Spirit that teaches us, and we have to be taught the Word of God to find out the will of God, okay? I've got to know God's will, and then I've got to hook my will up with God's will. If, if I don't, then I'll hinder God's will. And we've all been there. No need to get under condemnation. We've all failed. All have sinned and come short of the glory, but thank God for 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just who forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise God. What a heavenly Father. What a Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what a helper the Holy Spirit. It's a win-win situation. If you're in the kingdom of God, the family of God, you're on the winning team. Just make sure your will lines up with his will. Just make sure you want to. You see, our will has to become his will. We have to want to do what God tells us to do. Now, let me tell you, we have to fight sometimes against this spirit of rebellion. Uh, it's a spirit of pride that tries sometimes to attack us. It's a spirit of rebellion. When your parents tell you to do something, 
The kids are supposed to obey their parents. The Bible even tells us that. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is right. It's the first commandment. Ephesians chapter 6, it's the first commandment we promise. Chapter, chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. It's the first commandment with promise, and the promise is it'll be well with you, and you'll live long on the earth. What a promise. God's made a promise to the children that obey their parents. But the key is wanting to do what God wants you to do. Willing to do what God's will is for you to do. I want to obey my parents. Boy, they told me to do this. I sure wasn't looking forward to it. But because I want to obey my parents, I'm doing it. And so that we're just bringing on home to God. How many of you know God is our heavenly father? He expects us to obey him. Well, the only way I can obey him is to find out what he said. I've got to know his word to get to know his will. Faith begins where the will of God is known. I can't have faith beyond knowledge. But thank God, the spirit of truth has been sent to reveal to me the truth and the knowledge of God so I can believe God and have faith in God and for God and with God and walk by faith and trust God. There's no other way to live. Living by faith is what it, God has commanded and expects us as his children to do. We walk by faith and not by sight. Not by sight. Amen. You see, knowing the truth will make you free. Jesus said this. Now, let me remind you what Jesus said in John 14, 6. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And he went on to say, no man comes to the Father but by me. Well, Jesus is the only way. No other way except Jesus. <laughs> The, as soon as we settle that and get that established in our heart, the better off we're going to be. There's no need to look for any other way. Jesus is the way. Glory to God. And he said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. But then he also said in John chapter 8, verse 32, If you will continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. And then you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. See, if you really want to be free, you're going to have to get to know the truth. Now, there's all kinds of obstacles. The enemy, the devil, still tries to come and steal, kill, and destroy. He tries to come and immediately take the word from you. See, the liar, the father of all lies, Satan, the devil, he comes to you when you hear the truth, and he wants to steal the truth. Why? Why? He knows what Jesus said. You know the truth. Truth will make you free. Devil don't want you free. Devil wants you in bondage. He wants you to be uh, held in bondage by habits and by addictions. And I'm telling you, John 10, 10, Jesus tells us why he comes. To steal, to kill, and destroy. We need to have a red flag pop up whenever the devil's around. And therefore, we give him no place. For Ephesians 4, 27, Paul said, neither give place to the devil. The devil is a disgrace, so we don't want to give him any place. Amen? And the, even Peter said, resist the devil steadfast in the faith, so we can resist him. Praise God for that. But uh, we know that Jesus said, if, if we'll continue in his word, which is the truth, the truth will make us free. And we also know back to the will of man and the will of God. I find out God's will so that I can get my will confirmed, conformed to his will. Now in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3 and 4, we see that God, our Savior, will, this is God's will, will have all men to be saved. And then he goes on to say something else. You mean there's more after we get saved? Oh, oh, praise God. Being saved is just the start. Being saved begins in the heart. Being saved is the new birth, praise God. But he said, I will that all men be saved, and then 
come into the knowledge of the truth. Praise God. We can be saved through the Lord Jesus. We can continue in his word. We can come into the knowledge of his truth. We can find out the will of God and let our will be con conformed to his will and we can be set free. Merry Christmas. What a message on for Christmas season. If you don't know Jesus, oh, you don't want to miss him for the world. Right now, just call on the name of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I don't know you as my Lord, but I want to know you. I'm a sinner. I have sinned and come short of your favor and your glory. But I ask you to come into my heart today. I'm sorry. I repent. Forgive me for all my wrongdoings and my sins. Make me a new person. Bible says if you believe in Jesus, he'll make you a new creation. And uh, so make me new. Teach me your word and fill me with your spirit. I want to continue with you because I want to come into the knowledge of the truth and know what God's will is so that I can line my will up with God's will and I will be set free. And I thank you for saving me today. I believe God raised you from the dead. The tomb's empty. You're my Lord and Savior. Thank you so much today for making me a new person in you. If you prayed that prayer, we want to congratulate you. Merry Christmas for a new birth around Christmas time. No better gift than the gift of Jesus, God's word, and the new birth by the power of his spirit. So uh, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know. Uh, come visit us. We're at 1000 Colorado Boulevard here in Cheville, Tennessee. And we're here Sunday morning at 10 o'clock and uh, Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. We'd like to meet you and greet you and see you and hear what your testimony is. See, when you get born again, you get Jesus within, you want to go tell somebody, God has made me free. He set me free. He saved me. So until next time, God bless you and the grace of God be multiplied to you in Jesus' name. Amen.